everyone, my name is Marie, welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I'm sharing another build in the world of San Sequoia, which is the world that came with the brand new expansion pack growing together. I know all of my builds lately have been in this world, but it makes sense because the pack is new and obviously I want to build on all the different lots and just uh, try out different things, uh, like do different types of builds. So my previous one was actually a rec center and uh, yeah, a lot of you guys really, really liked that one. So that made me so happy because I was, I mean, I liked how it came out, but also it was a little bit out of my comfort zone. I wasn't sure if it was maybe a little bit too like weird or wacky, but I, I was so happy to hear that so many of you uh, actually liked the rec center. So that made me so happy. And today I'm sharing another residential home. So this is a family home and this is a very large family home because it's an eight sim generations uh, family home. So it has room for eight Sims total and I was thinking multiple generations. So we have room for two grandparents, two parents, a um, child, a teenager and an infant as well. So I thought that was really cute. So we have a teenager and a child sharing a bedroom. And then obviously there is um, a bedroom for the grandparents, which is downstairs. Then the parents have a, uh, bed a bedroom upstairs and there's also a little room for an infant upstairs as well. Uh, you'll see that once we get to the interior, of course. But yeah, the house turned out to be pretty big and I really like it. The backyard also is really big. I finally had space for the tree house object. I haven't had a, uh, a chance to actually place that one yet because it's so big. And for my previous builds, they were pretty small. They were definitely on smaller lots as well. So I ended up not having the space for it. So for this one, I really, really wanted to do that because this is a Generations family home. I wanted this to be like the ultimate wholesome gameplay family home, if that makes sense. So that is kind of what I was going for. And I felt that the tree house would be perfect for that. I also uh, had my Sim when I was play testing the build, I had my Sim go and actually build the tree house because for one, I wanted to see if it worked. And two, I wanted to see what it actually like looked like once it was fully built. So um, I had my Sim do that. So I think for the uh, gallery version of this build, like the, the version that's up on the gallery, I think the tree house is already finished. Not all the way upgraded, but it's finished and it has a slide as well. But you could obviously just delete it and place a new tree house and build it from scratch because I feel like the gameplay for that is really cute, especially if you can have your Sims build on it or like work on it together. I think that's a possibility as well. I only had one Sim on the lot when I played this at it, so I'm not actually sure how that works exactly. But yeah, I think from the trailer and stuff, you can actually work on the tree house with your family members. And I think that would be so, so cute. So I was definitely imagining this house uh, to be like full and uh, very busy. Then storyline wise, I didn't really have anything very specific in mind when it comes to personalities or careers or whatever. Uh, that's not really something I thought about. I just wanted to go all out with like cozy vibes and just family vibes and um, yeah, trying to make the house look very cozy. And so this is also, uh, I think this is actually the same area or like the same neighborhood where the rec center is located. Uh, it's that neighborhood on the top right of the map when you like load into it from the world view. And I really, really like this lot. I'm forgetting what size this lot is, but it's like a, is it like a 40 by 30 or something like that? Maybe I'm not exactly sure, but it's really uh, quite spacious. And I love the location for this lot. I love that. Like it's on a corner lot. I always really enjoy that for some reason. I don't know why, but there's something about corner lots that just made me very happy. And then you can kind of see uh, the road. I mean, obviously it's a speed build, so you won't really be able to look at it properly, but like the road kind of slightly goes up behind the house. And I think that that just looks so cute. That's definitely so like San Francisco inspired. And I just think of that is so cute. So the road kind of like slightly goes up a little bit of a slope. And uh, I don't know why, but I feel like that just makes the area so much more cozy. And I really enjoy that. But uh, yeah, you can see the exterior come together. I was playing around with a uh, color scheme and I know that I have used blue definitely before for my builds in this um, in this neighborhood. I like as soon as the pack came out, I did all these builds and a lot of them use blue. But that's because I really like the blue swatches that came with this pack, like the dark, deep blue. I don't know what it is because 
I mean, I like the color blue, definitely, but it's not something I would use as often as I have been using it for the past couple weeks. I don't know what it is, but I just, I really like the, um, the swatches of blue that this pack came with. So I used some black like columns and things and some black details for the windows and stuff, but then I combined it. Wait, actually, no, I used the white version of the columns, but then I combined it with a blue fence. That's what I did. Yeah. I used a lot of blue and white for the details on this house. And then I combined it with that deeper, richer brown, um, tone for for the siding as well. I thought that was such a pretty combination of colors. So like saturated, if that makes sense, and just really pretty colors together. I, I just, it was very pleasing to me. So yeah, I really enjoy the color scheme for the, um, for the exterior of this house. And then the interior as well, but the interior is a little bit more like um, mismatched. It's definitely not like overwhelmingly messy or anything, but it's definitely a little bit more mismatched. And I totally forgot to mention, but this is a limited pack build. So the packs that I use for this one is I used, um, I basically tried to go for like a combination of packs that maybe people who like to build family homes, who like to do family oriented gameplay would maybe possibly own. So I tried to really take that into consideration. So I used for this build, I used Growing Together, obviously, and then High School Years for the expansion packs. I used Parenthood as a game pack. I used Laundry Day from the stuff packs um, because I thought that was like a cute little extra thing to add because then I could like add laundry to the build. I really wanted to do that. And I thought for family gameplay, Laundry Day makes sense. And if you don't have it, it's fine. And then I also used both the clutter kits. So the bathroom clutter kit, as well as uh, the uh, everyday clutter kit, because I figured if you are a person who is very much into clutter, if you do like clutter, then chances are that you have both those clutter kits. Um, because I don't know, that just made sense in my brain. So I figured, you know what, I could just uh, use both. And then I do feel like both the clutter kits actually make a lot of sense for this house because it is a family home with like eight Sims living here. It's a generations family home. So naturally the build would be pretty full of stuff and pretty cluttered. We have a couple kids in the house. I mean, one teenager, but I was thinking they would be like 14, maybe 15, but more so like, like 14 years old, maybe like a freshman in high school is what I was thinking. And then the kid I was thinking could be like eight years old or something. And then we also have a little infant, which obviously the infant is very young. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking for this house. So, and then also the grandparents I was thinking are living with this family. So either it's just like one of the parents' parents are living in this house because it is the grandparents' um, bedroom is like a double bed type of bedroom. So it would definitely be a couple <laughs> sharing that room. So one of the parents' parents, the grandparents, like uh, are living with the family in this house as well. And maybe one of those parents actually grew up. Maybe this was their like childhood home as well. And they and then they just kind of never left. And once they had found their spouse or their significant other, they just kind of moved in here and the grandparents never left, like th that sort of a situation. Oh, uh, that could definitely be a thing. I thought that would be really, really cute. Um, but yeah, the exterior of the house is kind of finished. I did do some landscaping um, at the end of the speed build still as well. When I'm doing the backyard, I kind of just went through and added some more landscaping, but this lot was so big and a little bit overwhelming that I was like, you know what, I'll just finish the landscaping once we get to the uh, backyard so that I can actually, um, you know, have it look at it with fresh with a fresh set of eyes. That's an expression, right? I'm not even sure. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I did. And then here we're getting started on the uh, interior. So this is the hallway. I did not record me figuring out the floor plan for this one because it was, it took a long time. Like it took a couple sittings actually to <laughs> figure out the floor plan, like shorter sittings, but I had to walk away from it a couple times because it was getting a little bit frustrating because the, um, second floor is pretty small. I did get the second floor figured out pretty, pretty soon. That is something I always do when I struggle with um, floor plans. When the ground floor is just too much to handle, I will figure out a placement for the staircase first so that it makes sense for the second floor. And then I'll figure out the second floor first, and then I'll move back to the ground floor just to kind of have something to get started on, because that way I won't like keep messing around with the placement of the staircase. And it just kind of just can stay where it is. And then that kind of gives you 
um, I don't know, a little bit of a limitation on what you can do and then sometimes that really, really helps me. So that's what I did for this one as well and then I figured it out in the end. Um, this house, the floor plan might be a little wacky, but I do really, really like it. So once you, um, you can see that now we're working on the living room before we were living, working on <laughs> the, uh, the hallway or like the entryway. And then off of the entryway we have um, the parents or the grandparents bedroom including an ensuite and then we also have a little half bathroom um, over there and also the staircase and then here we have the living room I thought this one turned out really really cute Ugh, I just kept going with the blue tones in here I was feeling really inspired by the dark blue that I was using for the exterior and thankfully with this new pack we are uh, we got a lot of furniture pieces with that same sort of a rich deeper darker blue tone so that's kind of what I uh, what I kept using in here we do have a lot of mismatched wood tones throughout this living room and also the kitchen just kind of throughout the entire house actually we have a lot of mismatched wood tones I did that for what I did it on purpose because it's, you know, it's Generations family home. It's a collected home, if that makes sense. We have older pieces, newer pieces, collected pieces, renovated areas, you know, that sort of a thing. So everything is gonna be a little bit more on the mismatched side of things is what I was thinking. Um, but then also I really wanted to use some of that blue and the blue didn't always come with a wood swatch that I was like already using, if that makes sense. For example, the chairs here in the living room, they have those like blue, beautiful like blue cushions, but then the wood tone is that very like reddish um, type of a wood tone that I'm not necessarily using in here, but it does go with the brown color of the couch. So then that kind of just works in a way I was thinking um, but yeah, if the uh, mismatched wood tones bother you, I can totally understand, but I was really liking it for this one because it felt very realistic. Um, so I just kind of kept going with it. And then I also placed this uh, upright standing piano, which I thought was, uh, was just perfect in here. And then we have a little bit of space left behind the seating area, as you can see, like next to the piano. And for the longest time, I wasn't sure what to do with it, but I just kind of turned it into a kid's area and what I also did was I placed um a little crib no not a crib a bassinet is this a bassinet or a crib I don't know it's an infant's bed <laughs> I placed an infant's bed in the living room because since this house is so big you're probably going to be carrying around your infant like through the entire house a lot um, and it'd be annoying to only have a little bed for them in their own bedroom so I decided to put one in the living room like kind of in the center of the house as well so you can kind of just leave them there and just hang around and I also added a um little tummy time oh god what is that item called uh the little infants rug i'm not exactly sure what to call it um but the little mobile thing i also placed that one on the floor in the um little hallway off of the entryway i know the uh, floor plan might sound a little bit confusing right now but as always at the end of the video i will be doing a little tour of the house in its entirety so you can get a little bit of a better idea of the floor plan in here um but yeah here we're moving on to the kitchen slash dining room and at first I really wanted to do the living room in here because this is where we have um, the fireplace and it was giving me so much trouble because I couldn't figure out the layout and it just wasn't flowing nicely and I didn't like it and that's when I realized you know what the fireplace doesn't always need to be in the living room we can have a fireplace in the dining room I think that would be so so cute and the dining room happens to be open to the kitchen as well so I just kind of went with that to have the kitchen in its own little nook and then we have like a nice family dining space here because I was definitely thinking that this would be so much more than just a dining room. I feel like the family would spend so much time here in the kitchen dining because the space is nice and open and um, the kids can sit there and play games or do their homework while one of the parents or the grandparents might be cooking. Um, we also have a tiny little office. You can see that once I finish the entire kitchen and stuff. Um, a little office off of this room as well so maybe someone is using the computer and they leave the door open and it's just more of like a family room than it is just a kitchen dining so I could really see the family spending way more time in here even than in the living room if that makes sense uh, I thought that would be super realistic as well also probably because the parents don't maybe want to uh, like get the living room dirty they kind of just want to keep it clean for when the guests come over so whenever the kids are working on crafts or whatever they just kind of sit here um, at the dining table that's what I could really imagine as well 
Uh, and then for the kitchen, you can see that this is a little bit more on the modern side of things. I went for these gray and black countertops from Parenthood. They went perfectly. I, I keep talking about this, but I feel like the Parenthood counters just go so nicely with this pack and with the appliances and with the tiles. And it's just, ah, oh, it works together so nicely. So once again, also because this is a limited pack build, I naturally gravitated towards the parenthood counters because they were the best, by far the best option I had in my game at this point because I did disable all the packs. And then I definitely cluttered up the kitchen as well. I did leave um, one countertop free of decorations so your sims can actually use that to uh, do some cooking. But I could really see this kitchen being very, very cluttered because I mean, it gets used constantly is what I was thinking. I could definitely see one of the grandparents being very much into cooking and baking and like making lunches for the kids to bring to school and that sort of a thing um we have some like some keys and some snacks and some uh some cups and stuff just lying around i thought that that would be so so cute this was just this was just going back to basics for me like a very cluttered little kitchen like family oriented kitchen and i'm obsessed with this tile i love the subway tile from this pack as well but i love that more so as a flooring than i do for the wallpaper for some reason i really really love combining this subway tile flooring with this other like tile wallpaper that came with this pack i don't know what it is about that tile but i really like it i think it's so homey and cute and i hadn't used the black and white version before so i was really happy that i had a chance to use that in here as well um yeah, I'm still just uh, working on cluttering up the kitchen and trying to make it all like cozy and lived in with some little baskets and snacks. We have some fruit, we have fruit cake, we have cookies, we have a coffee maker and spices and all the stuff that um, would make sense in a kitchen, obviously. And I also tried to <laughs> play lights, place light switches everywhere throughout the house um, because I have noticed when I'm building, Sometimes I realize that they're there and sometimes I'm like just placing them everywhere but then at some point I'll forget that they exist and then I'll just forget to place them entirely. So that's a little awkward because then like half the rooms do have light switches and the other half of the rooms don't have light switches and then that is just a little bit awkward. Um, but for this house I think I placed them nearly everywhere. I'm not exactly sure. Um, they're also very small and hard to miss so maybe I missed a couple rooms but I think I placed them everywhere. And then here we have this awkward little corner in the living room or in the dining room, I should say, that I wasn't sure what to do with. I was thinking of extending the kitchen with some more counters, but then that looked very repetitive and it became a little bit too large. So I decided, you know what, let's close off this tiny little room and create like an open door out of like an archway and a door. And then um, uh, I placed it on a diagonal and deleted the wall behind the door. You could see me fiddle around with it so that it kind of looks like the door has been left open. So we have a tiny little awkward office space in there with a desk and a computer, but I thought it made sense. I thought it was really cute. And then here off of the kitchen, we also have this laundry slash full bathroom. So this is a full bathroom um, for the for the entire family to use. We have quite a couple bathrooms in this house, but I thought that that would actually be uh, nice because we do have, I was thinking of eight Sims and the house is pretty big. So it just, it felt like the right decision to kind of just place multiple bathrooms throughout this house. I think we have five in total. We have this laundry space slash full bathroom off the kitchen. I was not planning on turning this into a full bathroom. I thought I was going to make it a half bathroom because it's a laundry space, but then the room, just, the room just ended up being so spacious that I was like, you know what, I can fit a shower tub combo in here, let's go for it. Um, you can never have too many bathrooms when it comes to gameplay with eight Sims. So that's what I did. But then here in the living room, we have a tiny little half bathroom as well. And then this is the grandparents' bedroom and they have an ensuite. Um, so yeah, plenty of bathrooms. And then upstairs, the parents have an ensuite and then there is a shared bathroom like hall bathroom for the children to use so yeah definitely more than enough bathrooms and so for this bedroom i really needed a little bit of a breath of fresh air color scheme wise so i decided for uh i, I decided to use this bed with the red bedding on it and the orangey like wood tone and then i realized that in high school years we actually have these wardrobes that come in that exact like matching wood swatch and i also use the nightstands from that same furniture set. And I just thought that that looked so, so good together. I don't know what it is, but I just feel like they really took these different packs into consideration because 
The stuff from this pack has a lot of like cross pack compatibility, I feel like. So I was really happy that I decided to actually use high school years for this um, for this build. I was at first when I was deciding which packs to use, I was thinking that high school years would come in handy, but I also kind of already knew from the get go that I would have the teenager share a bedroom with a child. So then I was like, you know what, uh, uh, since we're not going to have like an entire high school bedroom, I might as well just not include the pack, but I'm happy that I did it anyway, because it came in handy all throughout the house, not even only for, for the teenager's bedroom. I definitely use it in there. So I'm so happy that I did decide to use it, but uh, yeah, it just, uh, it looked really nice throughout the entire house. So here we're moving on to the second floor. I did not record the grandparents ensuite, uh, by the way. I also didn't record the parents ensuite. I did record the whole bathroom because it was a little bit more spacious and I wanted it to look like the kids were using it um, actively. So that's why I decided to uh, to record that one. But here off of the landing, obviously we have the parents' bedroom. At first I wanted to go for a double bed from high school years, but I just, I really wanted to use this bed some more. I really like this bed from the new pack. It's just so pretty. And the colors that it comes with, oh, it's just, it's gorgeous. So I really enjoyed using this blue swatch. And then I use these little nightstands with some lamps. I also repeated these lamps throughout the house a couple times. And then one thing, one item I barely ever get to use is this shelving unit with the suitcases. So I was really, really happy that I got to use it. It looked so good here above the bed, just the right little area for it, in my opinion. Um, so I decided to place it above the bed and then here I just placed some curtains, obviously. I love the color of the bedding for this bed as well, for this version of it, like this swatch. The blue is so pretty and I feel like it goes so well with the more like rusty type of color that I, I'm using for the wallpaper in here. Uh, and then I decided to go for some base game uh, dressers or wardrobes kind of merged together to make it look like one big wardrobe because the small ones that came with the packs looked a little bit too small and I was thinking, you know what, the parents probably need a little bit more space. So that's what I decided to do. And for the rest, this better was very, very simple actually. Oh, I used a rug from high school years in here. Um, there you can see it came in very handy all throughout the build. And we just have some um, bathrobes and stuff in here as well. And then we're moving on to the shared kids and teens room. This room definitely gave me a little bit of trouble because um, I wanted to use some mismatched beds, but I didn't want it to be like too mismatched. So I decided to go for the bed from the new pack, like the, the lofted bed. And then I really wanted to use a high school years bed that came in a somewhat matching wood swatch but with a different type of bedding, obviously, because that's more catered towards teenagers. And I really wanted to use it since I was using the pack. I really wanted to use a bed from that pack as well. Um, and I feel like this just the, the beds that I went for go very, very nicely together, uh, which was uh, made me very, very happy. I wasn't planning on making the bedroom very pastel -y at first. I wanted to make it more on the darker side of things, like with darker wood tones and stuff. But this wood tone was the only one that like matched matched if that makes sense like perfectly matched so that's what i decided to go with and um my plans for the bedroom changed a little bit it became more like quote unquote girly and more pastel-y and uh yeah i i'm really happy with how it came out so this is a shared room once again for a teen and a child so i really wanted to try and reflect that we have a very young kid who is probably about eight years old and then a teenager who's probably about 14, 15 years old, which would also probably cause a little bit of trouble in day-to-day -day life as well, uh, is what I was thinking. I could definitely see that these siblings, I mean, they're close, but at the same time, there is a big age difference. So I feel like maybe the teenager from time to time just really wants the kid, their sibling to just get out of the room and just leave them alone while the kid just wants to play in there as well. And uh, they really need to like share the space and it, I was definitely thinking that it would cause some trouble from time to time, but you know, they're just gonna have to live with it and find a way to work around that. And uh, yeah, for family gameplay, I could really see that, especially with this new pack. Since you can set family dynamics, I was really thinking that maybe the kid and the teenager at this point would be very distant or like difficult more so maybe. Uh, they would fight a lot over the room and the space and the stuff and the colors and just, um, yeah, I just, I could definitely see that that was maybe a little bit of a problem. And for the teenager, I was thinking maybe they are very much into fitness and yoga. So I definitely placed some of the like fitness yoga stuff from the clutter kit in here and also some like makeup and hair stuff and like clothes and things. So I was thinking that the teenager would be very much into like 
um, working out, but also makeup and fashion. And then the kid is very creative. They really like to do drawing and uh, they like to do crafts and whatnot. So that's kind of what I uh, tried to reflect throughout the bedroom. And I think, I think I did well. I think it turned out nice. And then here we have the infant's room. The infant's room is kind of like the opposite. It's very, um, it's a very chill room, I want to say. It's a little bit on the darker side. I use this like darker wood tone combined with green. We have a lot of like nice darker wood uh, with green from the like new infant stuff, which is which is really, really nice. It's definitely my favorite uh, combination for the new stuff as well. So I used it in here as well. I think for all of my builds so far, I have only ever used this crib and this changing table, but they're just by far my favorites. So I just, I was like, you know what? Why use something else if I just like these better? So I decided to go for this combination of furniture again. Um, and yeah, I tried to clutter up the room. I ended up uh, moving the crib over to the other side of the wall so that we could have a little bit more space here on the floor so I could pl uh, place a little play mat on the floor. That's the word for it, play mat. That's the word I was looking for earlier. <laughs> uh, so I placed that one here and we just have a bunch of toddler clutter and decorations. I also placed a blurfy in here that the kid can play with or the infant can play with. And then what I forgot to do was place some like um, lose little toys on the floor. So, but I mean, I feel like for gameplay, you can just very easily go into build mode and place a couple toys on the floor. And then that is it. And then this is the shared bathroom for the kids. So for the teenager, as well as the kid. And then later on also, whenever their youngest sibling um, gets a little bit older, they will also be using this bathroom. They probably also use it now, like when the parents give them a bath, that would probably be in this bathroom as well. Maybe downstairs, but probably most of the time um, in this one. So this one, I really tried to make this one a little bit more like kid friendly, if that makes sense, with more colors and mismatched rugs. Um, I also placed some hampers throughout the build, obviously, because we do have laundry. So I really tried to not forget to place hampers. And I think I did an all right job with that. So that made me very happy. And then after that, we're moving on to the backyard. The backyard is kind of interesting because we have this um, back porch and then we have two staircases kind of leading into both sides of the backyard. Um, and then the grandparents actually also have a glass sliding door leading into the backyard as well. So for the smallest side of the backyard, I was thinking that is the area that the grandparents probably mostly use or, and the parents as well. And the other side is more so catered towards the kids. So that one has the, um, the tree house and then a swing set and a monkey jungle bar and just lots of toys. Uh, so that is for the kids. And then this side, the smaller side is for the adults, I guess. I don't really know. <laughs> uh, we just have a lot of planter boxes in here. I also ended up placing a uh, an easel on the back porch off of the grandparents' room um, just for an extra skill building item. I thought that would be really cute. And um, yeah, so on the other side, we have the tree house and I placed the swing set. That is the swing set that came with the uh, pre-order. It's like a pre-order item, not necessarily pre-order, but if you purchase the new um, expansion pack before a specific date, you get this swing set. I think that's this item. Um, so yeah, it's a little bit annoying, but I really like the swing set. So I decided to place it here anyway. If you have another pack with another swing set, if you don't have this expansion pack yet, I think actually if you buy it, I think it's until the 27th of April or something like that, but I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, that is going to do it for the speed build of this video. So let's jump right into the game and I'll show you the house in real time. So here we have the house in the game. I think it fits in very, very nicely. And I just love the location of this lot. Like I said before, with this road in the back, Ugh, it's just so wholesome. Anyway, this is the facade of the house. We have two gates leading into the backyard. So on this side and then also on this side, this is the kids area with all the play equipment, the tree house. And then around the back, we have the back porch with a dining table and a grill. And then on this side, we have the area with the um, with the planter boxes and the woodworking bench. We also have some lounge chairs in here and a tiny little back porch for the grandparents with an easel as well. So moving on to the inside of the house, we have a nice entryway in here. I tried to make this as like realistic as possible with all the Sims living in this house 
house. So this is pretty cluttered. And then we have a bunch of like coats and shoes and suitcases and stuff here as well. And then off of the hallway, we have this little half bathroom, nothing special, but just nice and easily accessible. And then in the back here, we have some uh, storage. Then moving on to the main areas of the house, here we have another little hallway situation that kind of connects the living room with the kitchen. I really, really like this. The floor plan just kind of turned out this way, but I feel like it just makes a lot of sense for this house. So we have this little hallway situation with a little love seat and a play mat for the toddler. And then through here, we have the living room. So I placed a bassinet. And then here we have the living room space with the television and a couple bookcases. I really, really like the blue that's incorporated in this living room. Blue color just makes me so happy. We have some family portraits here. Obviously they're empty, but you can fill them through gameplay. And then here we have some toys and stuff for the kids to use. Then over here we have the kitchen and dining area. So we have a nice eight seater dining table. And then I also placed a high chair, of course. You could also swap out one of the chairs for a high chair, but I just like the look of a set of matching chairs. And then just the high chair back there. We have a nice fireplace in here, an extra bookcase as well. And then here we have the kitchen. I really like how the kitchen came out. I feel like it's so cozy and it looks like it gets used all the time. It's a little bit messy and that's exactly what I wanted. So we have all the appliances and just a bunch of clutter. And off of the kitchen, we have this laundry slash full bathroom. We do have a little plant clipping here. I'm so sorry, <laughs> but that is just what happens, I guess. And then we also have this uh, this board from Parenthood, which I felt would come in handy with this gameplay. And then here we have the tiniest study nook. I really like how this came out. I don't know why. It's a little awkward, but I feel like it's nice. Then on the other side of the house here, we have the grandparents suite, basically. This one is a little bit of a breath of fresh air when it comes to the color scheme. It definitely stands out from the rest of the living spaces, but it's nice. So yeah, they have their nice double bed, a couple of wardrobes over here, a sliding glass door to the outside. And then here we have the grandparents ensuite. Then upstairs, we have this little landing area. And over here, we have the parents' bedroom. Again, some blue in here and these nice shelves above the bed. I'm obsessed with this item. And then they also have some wardrobes and the parents have an ensuite as well. All the bathrooms are very, very similar. They have the same set of furniture, the same color scheme. I felt like that was nice and uh, cohesive for a large house like this. Then over here, we have the infant's room. Oh, I love the colors in here. Then again, green is my favorite color, so I'm a little bit biased. But yeah, this is the infant's room with a little bit of space to play on the floor and obviously also a changing table and just some storage. Really, really cute room. And then over here, we have the shared kids and teens room. Very pastel-y, a lot of colors. So so they have their bed situation over here. The kid has their little crafting corner by the bed here. And then the teen has all their makeup over here. This is probably like a shared dresser, but I feel like the teen would take up most of the space in here. There is a mess on the floor. There is a desk situation over here that the teenager would probably use to do their homework and stuff. Some more toys as well. And then I tried to make the most of the space storage wise with these little um, shelves, like little cabinet things from the high school years pack as well. I thought that would be quite realistic. So very, very messy room, but I really like how it came out. And then this is the shared children's bathroom, which is a little bit more on the colorful side, a little bit mismatched as well, um, and definitely a little bit more spacious than the en suites as well. But that's about it for this house. So this generation's family home is up on the gallery. It uses only growing together high school years parenthood, laundry day, bathroom clutter, and everyday clutter. I built it on a 40 by 30. It has four bedrooms, five bathrooms, and it comes in at just under 143,000 simoleons. That is terrible, but as per usual, it is what it is. But that is gonna do it for today's video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. You can obviously go ahead and download it off the gallery like I just showed you. My username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok if you'd like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you wanna be notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. I also live stream over on Twitch a few times a week. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give me a follow over on twitch.tv forward slash Simmery Sims. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye!